Okay, so we are, I don't know where Monticello or whatever, remember? Or Monticello. Monticello or Monticello. Uh, we are north of Blanding, coming up here into the mountains, just on the south side of Moab. Um, some things that I want to vent about. I'll do it later in a later video. May need a whole episode for it. Um, long story short, we're in an RV park at the base of the mountain, and we'll probably just drive. We'll probably just drive from there to Moab in the next couple of days and do some trail riding there. So that's kind of our plan. Anyway, we're going up the base of this mountain. We're at about 7,000 feet in elevation right now. It's getting colder. The temperature's dropped down to 46 degrees. When we left this morning, it was like 60 down where we were at by Mexican hat. By the time we got up to um, Bradding, Blanding. Blanding, by the time we got up to Blanding, it had dropped 10 degrees. So um, the farther we get up, obviously the, the lower the temperature gets. But um, stay tuned here. We'll see if we can um, maybe get around to the edge of this or maybe even the top of this mountain and see if we can get some shots for you. But I bet you if we aired our tires down, we could make it. Well, if we did make it, we'd probably just get around the curve. There'd be more of it, and then we wouldn't, we'd be stuck again. Yeah, it's obviously it's going to get deeper, probably. The colder it gets. Yeah. Did you get it good? Yeah, it's really pretty out here. The colors yeah. are great. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to uh, go back, take one more good look at this new campsite we found, and then we're going to head to our motorhome for the evening. And we'll catch you later. Maybe. <laughs> if we're not in jail. We're outlaws. They shut the county down. Hey, there's a long road that goes way out there. Can't get a motorhome up that though. Anyway, stay tuned here. Uh, unless you don't agree with this and you want to sit in your house with the coronavirus. Yeah, we haven't so. really seen or like this is it. Like I don't understand our government this this whole thing that they're doing right now. Um, so we're camped out in the middle of nowhere. This was our previous camp before we had to leave today, and <clears throat> we've been out riding all day. There's not a person around our camp for miles. Yeah, you can see like I took like a 360 video of Clara, and you can't see anybody yeah. anywhere. There's nobody around. We're quarantined to ourselves, kept to ourselves. And um, we come back to our motorhome to a notice from the sheriff's department that says we need to vacate the premises within 24 hours for the for the lockdown or whatever. So okay, let's send all these people out of the BLM territory that are all dispersed. Nobody's near each other. Let's get them out of here 
and send them all back to the city, right? So then we come into the next town, and the, the motorhome parks, like, look, everybody's coming to the motorhome parks and the RV parks um, because they're getting kicked out of the BLM. How does this make any sense, guys? They want to, they, they want you to, what are they calling it? Social something or another? Distance. So, yeah, social distancing. Let's get them off of the BLM land, out of the national forests, out of the areas where they can be dispersed, and let's cram them into these little RV parks and these Walmart parking lots. Can somebody explain it to me? I mean, look, maybe I get the theory, uh, and I know that there's going to be people, if I do post this, there's going to be people that say, well, they're trying to deter people from coming to there. Okay, we get that. So do what Moab did. And what Moab did was they said, anybody that comes here that's not already here, you're not allowed to stay here. But if you're already here, you're already here, and you can finish your camping trip out, right? So it doesn't make sense to run people off that are already set up, they're already camped, and they're already doing this. Because all you're doing is you're running them off to somewhere else, and if the RV parks and stuff are open, which they should be, that's where everybody's going to go. They don't have an option. If you're traveling like we're traveling... Your option is a Walmart parking lot with 50 other RVs around you, and then you're going to be shopping in a Walmart, and you're going to be doing all this. So I, I just don't understand it. Somebody, I mean, I, I know we've done our votes and stuff on our page, and you guys kind of all see see it the way that we see it. And it's like there's really no better way than getting out and quarantining you and your family doing this. And we're, we, we've been out of the cities. We haven't been around anybody. We've pretty much been quarantined to our motorhome and our Jeep. Um for what, like four four days or something? So, guys, I don't get it. If you agree with me, comment below. I know that you people that don't agree with me are going to comment below because the negatives always come out more than the positives. So, anyway, that's part of my rant. I'll finish the rest of it later when I'm not trying to figure out where we need to go. Do you want to rant at all? Do you have anything to say? No. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> You're already here, guys. So a lot of these routes and these roads that we're taking are in between Mexican Hat and Moab. And uh, guys, these aren't really rough trails, but gosh, there's a lot of cool territory out here uh, where you could do some good overlanding out here on the BLM and stuff. Also, the terrain just changes so much when you get into the high peaks of the mountains or um, you know, you can get to the base of the mountains, the temperature really drops. And as you go up in elevation, you kind of run into some different terrain, different trees. Um, and then you come back down to the bottoms, you kind of get into this dirt and these rocky territories. So um, Moab is awesome. Stay tuned in our next couple episodes as we finally uh, get up to Moab and get into some of those rough trails. But I can't say enough about how I really recommend hitting the area between Mexican Hat and Moab to do some overlanding. Really great problems, but This is Newspaper Rock. It is one of the largest collections of petroglyphs in the country. Native Americans have been engraving and drawing on this monument for more than 2,000 years. It's 
on the way to camp. That's crazy. It's the long way out though. We're on that mountain on the other side of camp right now. What? We're on the mountain that's on the other side of camp. Daddy, what does this say? It says, the disaster of obesity bench. Look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Why are you closing up on that bird? I'm I was trying to ask you what the temperature was when you were down there. Was. Uh, I don't know. I think it's 36 now. Yeah. All right. Be careful on those bank curves. Yeah, it's dry over on this right side. That's why I'm kind of hanging to it. So it's starting to look like taking this mountain pass road back to camp maybe wasn't such a great idea. The snow's getting deeper as we get farther up the mountain here. As we get higher in elevation, obviously it's colder, so the snow hasn't had time to thaw. As you can see up here around this corner, we catch into a snow drift that's over a foot deep. Uh, this is where we kind of decide maybe it's best to turn back. Here we go. Ah, shit, I don't know. It, from the, according to my map, it kind of looks like this is about as high as we go. Now it's going to hook back over the other mountain. I was just seeing if we could get around it here. I don't do anything risky because we're... See, it looks like this is as high as we go. It looks like we kind of hook back around the left. I may not be able to winch you out because I might, all I do is probably slide. Or both get stuck. Okay, so we've been on this mountain, which we thought we could see up the top when we were at the base. It, it looked like maybe it was snowing up there, and you'll see in the video <laughs> kind of what we've been dealing with. But um, long story short, we ended up having to turn around and drive back down to the bottom of it. Um, actually, we're about halfway down it now, but the snow is a little over a foot deep uh, up at the top. A uh, snow drift over the road. So um, anyway. And it was snowing also. And it started snowing again. But I'm almost sure we were almost over the peak where we could start going back down. Um, but it's it's really hard to say. So it looks like it's closed. So anyway, we're going to see if we can get down to the bottom, see if we can get back to camp. It's going to be late by the time we get home. So see if we can get some food in our bellies. We're, we're all starving. We've been way to bust into the snacks. snacks. Yeah, out in the middle of the... Uh, out in the middle of the snow. But, yeah. So, anyway, it was an experience because I've never, um, I mean, I've been in a lot of snow and stuff, but I hadn't been in snow that deep um, in the Jeep yet. So, anyway, it was pretty crazy. It felt really helpless. Um, I think if we really want to, would have, like, if we had to make it, we could have winched up a little further and further. And I know that if you let air tire or air, air pressure out of your tires, that you kind of have a much wider traction. And we probably could have climbed up on the snow then after that. 
Um, but, you know, we're not desperate. We just turned around and, and it added about 25 minutes back onto our trip to come back down the mountain. So we'll, bet we'll get back safely and, and uh, we'll catch you all maybe at camp. If not, we'll catch you in the morning or on the next one. Hey, uh, please don't forget to press the like button on this video or any of our videos. And, uh, you know, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. <laughs>